Hi guys, so today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I wanted to come on here because August is Hair Loss Awareness Month and I felt like this was a really good opportunity for me to really talk to you guys a little bit about my hair loss and my hair loss journey. So if you've been with me from the beginning, you've gotten little bits and pieces of my hair loss, why I wear wigs, but for the most part, I'm just the girl who you all know wears wigs and does stuff to wigs but I really don't talk in depth a lot about my hair loss and why I wear wigs. So I really wanted to just kind of talk to you guys about that. And also I would just love in the comments below to hear your stories. I love to hear people's stories. And I think that's probably my favorite part about what I get to do. I get to do this. And then also with my work, I get to just meet all these amazing women and these women have these amazing stories. So down below, I would love so much if you feel comfortable sharing your story. I would absolutely love that. And I also want to, if you're okay with it, feature a couple of those in some upcoming videos as well. So let's get into, I guess, my hair loss journey. Take it away. What did you do? I just can't get enough. Too caught up in your love. Thinking about you. So my hair has always been really fine and thin. I just was not gifted with that really nice, luscious locks jean. And I also abused my hair like every other 90s child did by putting all sorts of dyes and chemicals and bleaches in it. So starting out my adult life, my hair was already in a bad place. And then on top of that, I had several surgeries. I had my gallbladder removed. I had an emergency C-section. I also had a son who was in the hospital for very long periods of time and I just wasn't taking care of myself. And all of those attributed to what a lot of women suffer from, which is, you know, hair loss. And it happens all the time. And it's almost like the first thing your body does when it just like, is in shock or it is lacking nu nutrients or anything like that, it takes away from your hair, your skin and your nails. And I was really starting to notice thinning areas and balding spots and just places that I could see my scalp and it was getting worse and worse. I'd always wear my hair on top of my head. And um, then I had weight loss surgery. So I decided to have weight loss surgery because I was just in a very unhealthy place and I wanted to kind of take my health back. And that was really the best solution for me. But there is a very, very common side effect that they kind of tell you about, but they don't, I feel like they don't tell you enough about or give you enough resources about, but hair loss. So hair loss is very, very common with weight loss surgeries. So I, like many, many women who have had weight loss surgery, started to experience that hair loss on top of my already, you know, going on hair loss that I was having happening at the time. This all, of course, is going on during the beginning of COVID when all the hair salons are closed. You know, everyone is kind of having to fend for themselves when it comes to taking care of their hair and everything. And I was in the shower one day and I was just pulling clumps of my hair out. I was crying and I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go get a razor or something clippers. We didn't have any at the time. I'm coming back and we're shaving my head. It took me forever to find something. I ended up finding like a body trimmer, hair trimmer, like a groomer. So it was the only thing I could find at like a CVS. And I came back and after charging it multiple times, having to stop, take breaks, lots of tears, yelling at my husband, even though it wasn't his fault at all, I was just emotionally just going through it at the time. I came out of it with a completely shaved head and I freaked out for a second when I looked at myself and then I was just kind of relieved. I felt like I had taken my hair loss into my own hands and I felt like I had some control over it because I just felt like I was out of control in that situation. And that's not always the solution for everyone and it's different for every single person and some people you know, can do that. And some people really, you know, need to hang on to their hair and that is totally fine. But that was just what I needed. And I felt like I then was like in control of the situation again. I had already been kind of dabbling in wigs here and there. I wasn't 24 seven 
I was, well at that point, I guess I was really kind of 24 seven committed to them because I was wearing my hair up and my hair was so damaged. I was wearing wigs all the time anyway. So it also was kind of like, oh, it's probably gonna make wearing wigs easier for me because I'm not having to take my very small amount of hair and try to like braid it, but not damage it, put it up, all of that. So it just, it was a little bit of a relief in so many ways. And so I shaved my head off. So now I will probably never, ever, ever have long hair again. And my husband asks me all the time, he's like, are you gonna grow your hair out? And I don't think I will. Once it gets to about a couple inches, I shave it off again because I start kind of to get back in that pattern of feeling like I'm seeing things and maybe I'm not seeing things and that is totally possible, but it just makes me feel better. So I probably will always have short hair forever and I will probably always wear wigs forever and I'm okay with that. Fast forward to we're almost, we're about almost four years into my wig journey now and I have learned a lot. I've come a long way. My wigs have come a long way and I just wanted to kind of just make sure you guys all know that no matter where you are in your wig journey, especially if you are in the beginning, it can be crazy. It can be overwhelming. There's gonna be a lot of trial and error. You're going to get some things in that you think you're gonna love and you aren't gonna love them or you're gonna have to do some work to them. And I hope that I can be there to help you with that. But I also hope that you just are there for yourself and just remind yourself that you are going to get it figured out and you're gonna look back three, four years later and go, wow, look at me. Like I am a completely different person when it comes to wigs in my knowledge and my comfortability and just even what I wear. I used to never wear colors. I was very specific about what I felt comfortable in. And now I'll throw on any wig and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna rock it, why not? And I hope that that is where all of you guys end up at. And I hope that no matter what place you are on your wig journey or what has brought you on your wig journey to begin with, that you know that there's a really amazing community out there of people. There are tons of really awesome resources. I am gonna make sure that I put down below in the comments some organizations that I really personally love what they're doing. Um, one of them I actually helped out with. Another one is um, a really awesome one for children. So I'm gonna make sure that all that's down below for you guys. So if you're looking for resources, those are gonna be there. Also, if you know of anyone that I haven't put down there, share those in the comments too. I love just giving all that information out to whoever needs it. I hope that me sharing just a little bit of my hair loss journey and my wig story with you guys helps you on your journey with whatever you have going on. I also wanna make sure you guys know that there is an amazing community out there. I'm here if you need anything. If you don't see something that you have a question about, let me know and I'll make sure we get an answer for you because that is very important to me. I always wanna make sure you guys are equipped to live your best wig life and I'll see you guys on the next one.